Hi, welcome back. We are on week five, chapter seven, the demand for insurance. It's one of my favorite lessons. So why do people buy insurance? Essentially, the demand for insurance, it's driven by fear of the unknown. It's driven by protecting yourself against uncertainty, hedging against your risks. So purchasing insurance, it means that you forfeit income in the good times to get the payout in the bad times. So you're paying your health insurance, car insurance, home insurance premiums every month or every year, even those times when you don't have a car accident or you don't really get any payouts directly from it. Um, and the purpose is just like that you're willing to pay to protect you just in case. So risk aversion is this thing that drives the demand for insurance. And we can model risk aversion through um, looking at the utility from income. So utility is kind of the way that an individual might value something. So utility increases with income. As income increases, you're getting more and more total value. But each additional dollar is less and less important to you. So going from zero dollars to 10 or 15,000 can be extremely valuable. Whereas going from 100 to 110 wouldn't necessarily change your life as much. So utility increases with income, but it does so at a smaller and smaller rate of increase. This is what that looks like on a graph. You can see on the x-axis is income and on the y-axis is utility. And so as income increases, utility is also getting higher and higher, but it's not a one for one increase. So at the higher levels of income, the change along the y-axis in utility is a much smaller and smaller difference. And so that's what this means that U prime of income um, is greater than zero, meaning that the change in utility with income is a positive change. Um, but you double prime of income, meaning the rate of the utility change is less than zero, meaning that um, the rate of increase in utility is getting smaller and smaller and smaller rather than larger. So if we know that the... Um, you know, the marginal utility of income is decreasing in income. What we understand that, like the way that that applies to insurance and uncertainty is that you're willing to give up some of your income in the good times to pay that insurance premium in order to protect yourself from those times when you lose all of your income and the income's like very valuable to you. And so the thing is when you're signing up for insurance, you don't know exactly whether or not you're going to be sick during that year. So you might have some probability of sickness, some percentage between zero and one. So we'll just call the probability of sickness P and the probability of staying healthy would be one minus P. So if your probability of sickness is 25%, your probability of being healthy is 75%. Um, and so, and when you get sick and that 25% chance that you get sick, you're gonna lose money from um, just hospital bills and medical services, in addition to potentially lost income, depending on how bad it is, if you have to miss work. So the combination of those things will reduce the um, kind of your net income available for you to spend. So I, sub S is income when you're sick, I sub H is income when you're healthy, and income when you're healthy is greater than um, income when you're sick. So the expected value is something both in insurance and just in general and math. It's when you multiply outcomes by their probabilities. So let's say that, you know, you have, um, a lottery that you're playing and there are four potential outcomes in one case you get a lot of money you know maybe another one you get nothing and the other two is somewhere in between and they each have a probability of happening so ahead of time when you want to think about what's the overall value of that ticket you can multiply each of the probabilities times their the value in that outcome and you sum it and that is the expected value across the potential outcomes in the case of looking at a person who might be purchasing insurance, that would just be their probability of being sick, that was P, times the income when they're sick, 
plus the one minus P times the income when they're healthy. So that would be the expected value of income. So here's an example. Let's say that we offer um, a graduate student a choice between two options. You can imagine this is yourself. So you can either get a lottery that would have, um, that would, where you would make $500, a 50% chance of earning $500, or a 50% chance of having zero, or just with 100% certainty, you can just get a check for $250 right now. Um, which of those things would you prefer? So you can like think about it for a second. So the expected value of both of those things is actually the same. Um, if we apply the expected income formula from before, it's you know 50% times the $500 outcome for option A, plus 50% times $0. If you get nothing, that's $250. And then in the other case, it's just a 100% chance of getting $250. So technically, the expected values are exactly the same. However, most people would prefer the $250 check with certainty as opposed to getting um, a, a lottery of the same expected value. Um, and there's like a lot of empirical studies that suggest that people just prefer, even at the same expected value, people prefer certainty. Um, if you actually prefer the uncertain option, that says something different about your utility function, but we'll get into that. So first we're going to define expected utility kind of in a similar way as how we've defined expected income um, for a lottery or a lottery meaning an uncertain outcome. 